Uh, today, what I wanted to go over is a question that a lot of writers ask me when I'm either at panels, conventions, or uh, if we're just doing like a creative workshop kind of thing. So today I wanted to cover what you're going to need for publication. And I don't feel like I should have to say this to you, but you need a finished manuscript. I know some people think, oh, I can just give them a few chapters and then while they're going through it and looking it over, I'll just finish the book. It's fine. No. Don't think that way. That's very bad and very, very, very procrastinating of you. <laughs> Is that a word? Procrastinating. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe not in that context. The thing you want to target when writing your manuscript, your novel, uh, memoir, whether it's nonfiction or fiction, what have you, uh, you need to make sure it's at least 50,000 words. That is your target number. No one's going to look at anything under 50k for a serious novel unless you're entering short stories or obviously a children's book. These aren't going to apply to you. This is going to be for people that are writing um, more novels and whatnot and wanting to get their work uh, published. Let's talk about after you've finished your manuscript and you're looking for an agent. Now, one of the questions I've had people ask is, do I need to have it edited before I send it to the agent? Or this is kind of debatable because myself, I've had my stuff edited before sending it off for publication. But I've also heard a lot of people in the industry say that as long as the quality of the writing is there, you don't have to have it edited. And I did talk with a friend of mine a little while ago and she said, you know, she did confirm, you don't have to edit your work professionally before you send it to an agent. You're going to look for an agent first. But before you can do that, there's something you're going to have to do. And that is something called a query letter. Um, your query letter needs to be personalized. So I wrote myself up an outline. You're going to see me refer to it a few times because I was writing myself like, you know, I'm a very like, things have to be tangible kind of person. Each letter should be personalized to the agent. If you're unsure of the agent's gender, like if they have kind of one of those gender neutral names like Chris, uh, just include their whole name. Make sure that you know what the agent is looking for. The agent is say a non-fiction published, uh, he goes to non-fiction publishers. You don't want to give them your piece of fiction. That's not what they're looking for. So. You're going to, I'll, I'll give you websites at the end of this uh, where you can go to actually search for agents in your area. But you want to do a little research on the agent before you send your manuscript to them because you have no idea uh, what it is they're looking for. Plus, there's that little thing of personalization. When you send a query letter to them, and I'll actually show you guys an example of a query letter here in just a second. Um, also further personalize the query letter by saying, you know, if you do a little research and you go on their website, a lot of times they'll have links on there that talks about like interviews they've been in or if they've been in a blog or a website, they'll have little interviews and they'll like list out what it is they're looking for or certain manuscripts they're wanting that year or genres of writing. For example, I saw you online and you were looking for a hard sci-fi novel. Well, this is perfect because I have a hard sci-fi novel I've written and I'd like to give it to you. So you can add that in your query letter to personalize it to that agent. Is it necessary to personalize your query letter? Yes, 100% do it. Even if you're sending it out to 40 different agents, personalize those just a little bit. Don't send out like mass emails like you do at work. That, that's not gonna work. It comes off dull and insincere and they're gonna be able to see right through it. Things to include in your query letter is the hook. 
So if you're a writer, you're familiar with a hook. A hook is what grabs the audience's attention. And you have to have a hook within the first chapter of your book, usually within the first few paragraphs. If they're not hooked, they're gonna put the book aside. Um, it's gonna go in the trash if it's an agent or you know publisher, if you're wanting to take the direct route, which in this day and age, I'm really not gonna recommend unless you have some kind of in or they've approach to you beforehand. It's like they've seen that you're really successful through self-publishing or that sort of venue. Use your story's hook so they know what's unique about your character because uh, normal is boring. You need a hook. So for example, I'll use mine. So my story is about a young Asian American woman who finds out that she is a Japanese deity. This is basically the cool idea that pulls you into use popular, relatable stories to describe your own as well, your own story. So you would say, imagine the star-crossed lovers in the vein of Romeo and Juliet. Everybody knows Romeo and Juliet. We had to read it in school, so. Except instead of two noble families in Italy, my story follows the offspring of Amaterasu, the sun goddess, who's at war with the western heavens and as fallen angels. You want to use something to that effect to really grab their attention because it's like, oh, okay, I know Romeo and Juliet, but hmm, western mythology, eastern with mythology combined to have this all out like war and this is just a semi seemingly like ordinary girl who gets dragged into all of this. So you have your relatable Mary Sue type character. I know that's a negative term, but um, it's, it's pretty true, you know, protagonist, all that fun stuff. So when sending your manuscript to an agent, make sure it's all in one document. Don't send a document for each chapter. An agent will slam their head against the desk. Okay, <laughs> and no one got time for that. Send one document, you get one chance. Basically, they just want a few chapters from your book. And what they want from out of your book is they want the beginning chapters, or chapter, I should say, because what they're looking for is a few pages from out of your first chapter. Don't take the quote unquote good chapters, take the first chapters of your book put it in there okay this is very important because they're seeing if you have the ability to hook the audience uh, next you want to include around the middle of the manuscript so right about the middle of your story and make sure you kind of outline them it's not necessary to put it in book format they just want it separated and spaced so they can read it just make sure you outline this is chapter one or this is chapters one through three and then go down and you put chap you know this is the book chapter whatever whatever the mid of your book is chapter 10 chapter 12 whatever you want to include in there and then near the end of the book but not the end of it so maybe a chapter or two before the end of the book include in there and Typically, they don't want to see the very end of the book. They want to see what your build up to the end is. And that, that's kind of the purpose for that. So make sure that uh, you include those three and then the book's title. And often, your title that you initially choose is not what they're going to publish or feel is going to be publishable. If you have a insensitive title, if you have a title that's just kind of confusing and maybe not, you know, the audience isn't grasping from the title what it's going to be about, sometimes they'll advise you to change that or they'll just change it. So you want to um, go ahead and research and properly title your book. Don't want to say that it is a young adult YA, which is a very popular genre of book writing, if it's actually just fantasy. If you're telling me that a 23 year old or a 25 year old or some arbitrary adult year number is young adult, it's incorrect. So know your genre, research it before you actually title it as that genre. Young adult is typically between the age of 16 to 18 as the main protagonist or you know the main character in the story. So know your genre before you do that. Otherwise they're gonna be like, has this person even written before? Do they 
actually understand how this works. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to say might sound a little confusing, but just hear me out. Um, always send your query to one literary, literary agent at a time. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't mean you only send one letter out per manuscript. It means you send one email to each literary agent. So again, I'm going to hone in on that, personalize your query letter to each agent and also personalize your email to the agent. Don't do gimmicks. So I've met a lot of, um, I guess, eager authors or, you know, ones that are wanting to become authors. They try to be gimmicky with how they pitch themselves and it ends up coming out kind of creepy and awkward. Don't include how much you've sold to the literary agent. Okay, that comes off as like you're bragging and you're also insecure. Do not contact a literary agent via social media. Again, revert back to awkward and creepy, okay? They have emails for a reason. That's how you contact them because they have thousands of other individuals that are wanting to do exactly the same thing as you. You know that don't cut in line kind of mentality that we all learned in elementary school and high school? It's the same thing. What is okay to mention in query letters? You do want to mention writing credits any training, like any professional training, maybe workshops, uh, if you've gone to college for this, publications, like past publications, totally okay. And if you're a fiction writer, you don't have to include a bio. I know that's been instilled or ingrained in a lot of us to put a bio up, especially if you have like your Amazon writing account, like me, you have to put something up in there and it's weird having to write about yourself. Like, oh, I hate writing about myself. You don't have to do that unless you want to highlight maybe awards you've won, like we've mentioned before. So if you've maybe gone to great lengths with a novel, if you've had publication credits, if you've had groups you belong to that help with writing, uh, if you've got an interesting background that actually pertains to the story, like say something happened to you that happened to the main character, right? We always write what we know. Um, for me, example, with uh, my Hell's Gate series, I actually traveled to Japan twice to get a feel for the area, the culture, uh, location. Like, I'm, I'm very nitpicky about writing about an area if I've never been to it because I would like to actually get that as accurate as possible. And that's just my kind of neurotic personality. <laughs> These people were probably wondering why I was getting on a train or like going through downtown Osaka and just filming people while they're like going into the different restaurants and whatnot, but I was just like, this is awesome. Now the reason why I mentioned doing that is it's a way to stay professional in this manner um, instead of like attacking them on social media or calling them. Oh, that's the other thing. Do not call the literary agent. That is a no-no. Um, email them. Just make sure you mention these kind of things as humbly as possible. Like, humble bragging is a thing that people don't like. So kind of learn how to finesse talking yourself up but not sounding like a complete asshat. Uh, these kind of things, they, they don't hurt your case and sometimes they help. Especially if, say, your query letter is a little mediocre or kind of dry or you don't have a lot of experience to put on there. This certainly helps. So if you've printed, say, several notable short stories in journals or, you know, any online publications, blog sites, news sites, uh, you know, any kind of journalism, that sort of thing, you can include that in there. When looking for an agent, we're going to talk about a few things about once you've contacted the agent and then what to consider in an agent. And then we're going to also actually show you our query letter and talk about some websites so that way you can kind of see some visual representation of what it is you're needing to do. Most people are visual learners. That's like 90% of the population. So it helps to actually look at it versus trying to pull it out of your ass. Literary agents, don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, you have to be aggressive in just about any field you're in, right? We're all taught that. 
you have to go after what you want. And a literary agent has so many people trying to get published. I mean, they could be any, they could be a type of agent that's new, right? Where they only have like say four to maybe 10 clients. And then you have some literary agents that have like 200. Don't be afraid to ask them questions or contact clients like current clients they have or past clients. And a lot of newer clients I've found are actually very generous with information and can give you some insight on how that agent works and the agency works. So that way when you're making your decision on who you want to publish, you, you kind of, you're kind of armed with that education beforehand. Definitely research the agency and the agent. See what the agent has, uh, like who they've represented, who the agency represents. Uh, if you're gonna actually be a good fit for that agency, look at the clients and what type of clients uh, he's, he or she is representing. So that way you can see, hey, do I actually fit in with these individuals? Does my writing work with this? Most agents have a certain client base they work with in fiction, because there's not just fiction and nonfiction agents. There's, uh, you know, sub-genres of that as well. So say some people specialize in historical fiction or, you know, contemporary fiction. And you just can find all of that on their website once you find and kind of pin down the agents you're wanting to go with. So one of the things I will warn you against when you get on the phone with an agent is they're going to sound like the most amazing individual. They're going to really sell themselves. They're going to get, you know, put out like really pretty dazzling words. And you have to pay attention to what it is they're saying versus what they're trying to represent themselves as. So an agent has to sell themselves as much as you have to sell yourself to an agent. Isn't that weird? This is your career. So make a choice based off of what you want to accomplish with your career. Some red flags with literary agents. Um, are they asking for money? Because if they are, they're not a legit agency or agent. Uh, that is a huge red flag. If an agent ever asks you for money, run the other direction hard. Now, here's a big one. Hardcover or paperback? And you always see paperback books in um, discount bookstores and whatnot. They're not really taken seriously, right? It's when you see the ones at like online that are from Barnes and Noble or something like that, where it's that hardcover, because that's kind of when you know you've made it. So make sure that you're, you know, if you're really wanting to go that route with your writing, look and see if they publish paperback or hardback. That's actually really more important than more people realize. How many deals have they made? Have they closed one or two? You know, look at their client base. Like I said, this is your life. So don't be afraid to ask those questions and actually look and see if they can back up what they're saying. If they're only representing four or five clients and they've been in the business for 15 years, something is wrong. <laughs> something is horribly wrong. You wanna also not only look at their client base, but you want to look at the publishing houses they work with. Uh, are they big names? Do you recognize any of the authors or clients that are coming out of that publishing house? Um, after you look at all of that and you say, okay, all these things line up. Okay, check, they didn't ask me for money. Check, they're a fiction writer, that's who I would look for. Check, they have hardcover. Okay, they've worked with a lot of big names. They work for a really good publishing house. Okay, these all line up, check, check, check. So how receptive is that agent to bringing you on? Because if that agent is just completely booked and doesn't have a way to bring you on that year, why would you mess with that? Because at that point you're putting on a, you've been put on a waiting list. That being said, if you're wanting to wait and you've really got your heart set on that publisher and that agent, um, you can wait, but just be forewarned, you're gonna be put on the back burner. Might wanna move on. For new writers, uh, you are gonna want to go a little, I guess, a little more of a reality check. 
because if you're a newer writer, you're going to want to go with a literary agent that's a little new. Um, especially if this is your first time sending a manuscript off, uh, you got to work with what you can and what you can get. So, you know, don't settle for something silly or, you know, subpar. Just make sure that they're not someone that's representing you know, JK Rowling or something like that. You're like, okay, yeah, I could totally get in with this lady. Let's do this, man. A thing to remember is that you won't see all of this information on their website. You might only see parts of it, like maybe they'll have their clients listed or how many um, deals they've closed. You know, maybe the publishing houses that they work with, but it won't be like all of it. Sometimes you get lucky and they're all there, but most of the time you're going to have to just pick and choose. Don't jump into an agency too soon. Just like I was saying before, you want to take your time before sending it off to that agency just to make sure you've dotted all your I's and crossed your T's. You've talked to the clients, you've asked the agent questions because obviously they're interested in you if they're contacting you, right? So just kind of sit back, relax, look at your options and see what's going to be your best deal. Okay, so some websites where you can find literary agents. Um, I'll go ahead and add this up on YouTube. Uh, you want to go to writersmarket.com. You can find agents there. You can find them on querytracker.net. Query is Q-U-E-R-Y tracker.net. There's also publishersmarketplace.com and pw.org, which is, I believe, poets and writers. Agentquery.com. Ah, got it. Agentquery.com is another one as well. So let's switch over. I know many of you are probably asking, what does a query letter look like? Because I have no clue. I've never written one. Help, Gray, help. So I got you, fam. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, you're gonna have your name, so C.A. Grayson's query, or if you're using your real name, you know, whatever works. You've got subjects and your referrals. You're gonna put your referrer's name. So say if you were referred by another author or you know someone that works within the publishing house or someone that works within the agency, depending on where you're going to send your query letter off to, you put their name there. And then of course you do dear agent's full name. Please don't actually write these verbatim. Please don't do that. <laughs> so I am submitting my literary fiction novel. You put your title here. To you upon the recommendation of, and then you put your refer's name. And this is just an example. You can find many of these online. Uh, Writer's Digest has some really awesome examples. Uh, let's see, author of, you know, whatever, Deep Space Flight, and just put in here arbitrarily. When established author's name. Uh, finished reading my novel, she said, I'm going to say this as clearly as I can. I love your book, blah, 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 you know, whatever the author stated um, to recommend you. And then... Also, when I read one of your favorite books is, you know, I'm going to include one of my favorite books, Peter Klein's 16. I thought we might be a good fit, fit as that book, like title of novel here, is deeply personal with its purpose, imagery, and intimate voice. You want to add, you know, this is what I was talking about earlier. Here's your hook, your pitch. We'll say Hell's Gate is a story of 24-year-old Celeste Inoue, an ordinary woman who teaches university music and lives a quiet life with her boyfriend in Texas. However, when she starts hallucinating a demon child spirit hovering on her balcony, her past explodes into her present and she's thrown into a psychological upheaval so raw, she lands at the end of the earth, quite literally where she is forced to fight for her best friends, her identity, and her sanity. So we can go on and we can add more here. So, you know, we add, okay, here's, here's what it's about. Let's add some 
you know, concrete you know, story told in the spirit of the Weaver and the Cowherd and Romeo and Juliet. So you can add two, two things people might recognize, maybe even one people might not. Uh, the Weaver and the Cowherd is actually going to be a companion story. It's an old folk Chinese and Japanese folk tale that I enjoyed as a kid, and it's in the novel. So that's where that comes from. Uh, Hell's Gate is evocative and compelling for people who are not hiding secrets, and it's deeply affecting for those who are. So obviously, this is pitch talk, right? So I know we said don't be gimmicky, but this is the kind of pitch you want to do for your story. See, it sounds confident, but not overselling. And then you go on down here to talk about yourself instead of bio. We've got, I am the lover of stories and the owner of the list workshops, panels, company, etc. whatever it is you want to add in here in Dallas, Texas. I'm not running my companies. Uh, when I'm not running my companies, teaching or riding my bike, you can add little quirky fun details about yourself here. I'm writing my third novel, We Were the Last. Um, I've published in blah blah blah, so you can do writing contest journals or online publications here in this paragraph. And then you want to put Hell's Gate, which is the name of my title, is a complete manuscript at 52k words and is immediately available upon request. I look forward to hearing from you. And then you're going to put your name, your phone number, your personal website. So this is like a writer's resume, basically, or a writer's cover letter. It's to grab their attention in the sea of people that's going to be also doing the same thing. Here's our query. You can find more examples at uh, Writer's Digest. You can look them up online. I think Google has some as well. We'll be doing more of these every Wednesday. We'll do some story-driven writer's workshop, I think, next week. We'll go ahead and take a vote and see what you guys want to do for next week's writer workshop. If you want to write something in the, this week, you can do that. We can help each other. We can talk about, you know, editing work. Uh, I think we could also even cover... Uh, if you're wanting to go the route of self-publishing and that sort of thing, what you're going to need to do for that. And that's where editors really come in hardcore, especially when you're self-publishing. It's not particularly a medium that people still take seriously. Um, but there are some very successful independent authors like, uh, oh goodness. It had Mark Watney as the main character, and he went, like, he got trapped on Mars, and he was actually an independent author who ended up making, like, a million dollars off of self-publishing, so it can happen. It really just depends on how, what platform you're using, how you're marketing yourself, all of that sort of thing. So if you're wanting to learn about self-publication, we can do a workshop over that as well. Hi! <laughs> So if you have any questions, feel free to message me on here. I'm also on Facebook at C.A. Grayson, gray with an E, because that's how I spell gray, go with it. Um, I'm also on Twitter, and I'm also on YouTube. I do gaming tutorials and writing tutorials. Those are the two things I do typically. I hope this has been extremely helpful for you, uh, hopeful writers out there or people that are hoping to you know, get into publication, find an agent first. And in order to do that, you need to follow all those steps. And I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you for more writer's workshops next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Uh, we're doing Evil Within 2 gameplay this Sunday at 11. I usually do 11 to 1 on Sunday. Tuesday is dedicated to Fortnite. I usually start sometime after 12, sometime between 12 and 2. It just kind of depends on my schedule for the week. Take care. Have a great Wednesday.